Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to visualbasic.net tutorial. Um, today we'll be talking about structures and we'll see how they are useful in simplifying our programs and helping us understand uh, how the program, uh, helping us in solving the problem. Okay, so we have this very simple program. Okay, we read the information of a person okay and then display them the information include the person's name the person's telephone number and the person's salary okay this is how we read the information and this is how we display the information okay now uh, let's just run this one to test it okay read the information Smith telephone number and salary Okay, display the information. This is Smith, his telephone number, his salary per month, his salary per year. Okay, so this is basically the the program. And there's no problem with that. The issue is these attributes are related together. Sometimes you have lots of attributes for uh, a single object. For example, you might want to add account number for that person you might uh, want to add license number credit card number some kind of other information so you will have to increase the number of variables and usually increasing the number of variables in an application uh, could give you problems because you'll have to remember them and uh, if you have many distinct people um, where you want to define their information uh, you might get a problem with that for example let's say you want to add another person in this case you will have to define it like this name. let's say name 2 cell 2 etc but usually if you have 30 person you you will have to define a 30 time or you might want to use an array but uh, if you use an array of course you will have to use three distinct arrays and so on so each time you add an attribute you will uh, create another array for that so the other way to do it is to group each number of related information into one entity uh, which is called a structure okay so how do you do that the way to do it is like this you write uh, structure okay then you will give a name for that structure now let's say person info and now you will write the information here so this is the person's information okay so what does this mean exactly it means that the person info has three attributes it has a name it has a telephone number it has a salary these three attributes represent uh, could represent a person okay now this is only a definition it does not mean we are, we are having uh, the, the information to store the person's information uh, to store the uh, we don't have a variable to store the information to create a variable you just write dimension info as person information okay here as you can see we only define one variable uh, which is info and inside this variable we will fill the attributes so it will be like this info dot name okay info dot telephone and info dot dot side okay as you can see here now we are going to info accessing the name and property and filling it the salary and uh, the telephone and sell the same way here it works the same way it will be info.name info.telephone and info.sal info.sal okay so this is basically how uh, you group these together now if I run the application just to show you what's the difference there will be no difference in the execution okay one two three four five six let's say we have six hundred and displaying the information smith one two 
Hey, 600, 7,200. Okay. So you get the, exactly the same result. However, for you, for the programmer, it's easier for you to understand. When you see info, you know that these variables contain all the properties for your employee or uh, for that person. Okay. Now, what happens if you want to define uh, the information for another person? You don't have to define a new name, a new telephone, a new salary variable. Instead, you just define one extra uh, variable, let's say info2 as person info, okay? Or info3, info4, info5. Each one of these will, each one of these will have inside it a name, a telephone, a salary, okay? It's as simple as that, okay? Okay, now, uh, okay, now let's let's make this application a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Okay, instead of using this method, we'll modify it to read uh, the information and store it in an array. Okay, so here, okay, we are gonna use an array. Now. I will remove this code, okay, and I will modify this one and read info. There will be no display info here, okay. Now, in read info, uh, we will have to define the number of people dimension and as let me let me use subroutine so that we can rehearse what we have been doing okay this is uh, the array to store persons info okay and this is the data structure okay data type or data structure now read the information and store it in an array. This will be public sub read info. Okay, and this is how it works: dimension as integer, dimension n as integer, uh, and it equals input box. Enter the number of. Uh, people you want to process uh, to, let's say to uh, um, okay enter a number of people that's it okay this will be enough and then read the mission we are resizing the array on for 0 to n minus 1 now I will have to make a loop. Read on for here. For i equals zero to n minus one, and then on for of i dot name equal on the box. Enter the name of person. On for i dot uh, telephone call open box enter the tel 